Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grid Girls, the women racing to win. Joe from the Grid Network, along with Daniel from Racers, the girls behind the helmet. We have a lot of racing to recap and very excited to share with you the upcoming weekend of all the women racing. We'll start with this past weekend at the Porsche Carrera Cup Championship Finale. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, last weekend there was the uh, final race of the uh, of the season for a Porsche Carrera Cup uh, UK, uh, which is uh, commonly uh, known as the fastest one make series uh, in Europe. Um, Porsche Carrera Cup has uh, like TCR has national championships uh, all, all pretty much around Europe, and then there is the uh, international championship, which is the Super Cup series, which runs together with Formula One. Uh, Esme Hockey. Uh, as Joe said, uh, was a W Series racing, was racing in W Series last year. Um, she did pretty well. She was one of the uh, five British ladies in, uh, in, the, in the series last year. Um, ultimately, she was not confirmed as the, uh, one of the top 12 on, on the classifying in, 2020, in 2019, uh, but still managed to qualify third in, in Brands Hatch, uh, which was her best result last year. Had a couple of unfortunate weekends, like a Norris ring where she crashed in in qualifying. Um, but still, um, she she was not very experienced in Formula cars. It was actually her first season in uh, in Formula racing because she had always raced in in GT cars. Uh, she actually had two previous seasons in uh, in Porsche Carrera Cup, um, and then previously uh, previous to that, she was racing in GT4 in, uh, in National GT4 in, uh, in in UK, where she finished second actually, and the uh, Ginetta uh, Championships, which are very popular uh, series for young drivers coming up from uh, from uh, the karting ranks. Uh, so this is, was her uh, third year in the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup UK. And uh, she did very well this year. Uh, she finished third uh, after a partial campaign in 2019 because, of course, she was racing in the W Series, which had the uh, the, the, the commitments from from W Series uh, were uh, first on, on her on her list. Uh, but still, uh, she she did well and she finished third. And her aim, her target was this season definitely to win the championship in the Pro Am class. And she did so in uh, a spectacular fashion. Um, she won nine races and finished 15 times out of 16 races this year on the podium. So definitely a super competitive uh, se uh, season for Esme Hockey, which uh, is, is living really nearby the uh, Brands Hatch circuit, which hosted the, the fi season finale of the Porsche Carrera Cup UK uh, this year. Um, so a, a circuit that she knows perfectly. It was a little bit damp, she said, which were not her favorite conditions. Uh, but still, um, she came into the final round of the of the championship uh, knowing that she basically only had to finish the race to win this, the, the championship because uh, she missed out on securing the title at Snetterton well, two weeks ago by just one point. So she played it very safe. Uh, she was very cautious during the all uh, the weekend at Brands Hatch, uh, while on the other hand, her uh, teammate uh, Ratcliffe had really to do to to do all his best to try to uh, to clinch that title and to strip that from uh, away from her teammate. Uh, but still, it wasn't enough. Uh, Ratcliffe got pole position and race one victory. Uh, but with a, with a second place, uh, it was uh, in, enough for Esme Hockey to uh, claim the title in the pro am class. Uh, she was eighth overall and second in class. Uh, she had qualified third, so again a, a pretty competitive race from her. Moved up one place and finally got that uh, point that secured her the title. In the second race on Sunday, uh, both the the, uh, the the title contenders, which of course, uh, Esme had just won the, the, the season, uh, got tangled in, in a contact after a safety car restart, uh, which also involved a couple of other cars. Uh, so the, uh, the victory went to Aaron Mason, uh, but again, uh, Esme was second, uh, more points, more podiums. Uh, as I said, nine victories and 15 podiums out of 16 races, a super competitive race for, uh, for her. Uh, she said that uh, she will reveal uh, her uh, program for, for 2021 in, in the coming weeks. So we uh, all await uh, for her plans in the, in the near future. 
Very exciting. Big congratulations to Esme. Very exciting for her and her championship effort there. Another championship caliber driver, Tatiana Calderon. Tatiana returned to Japan for the Super Formula 4th round. She had missed the two prior races due to travel restrictions in Japan and for her commitment in the European Le Mans series. Her first race back was at Autopolis. She climbed back in the car. This is the first time in more than three months. And that last time she raced was her series debut at Motegi. So it's going to definitely be an interesting race for her. Has to be a lot of difficulties, especially since there's no testing in the car due to the restrictions going on. Considering all the things against her, she did fairly well. Since the season opener though, the pit stops were now getting compulsory. So this was definitely another race in which it was strategy driven, especially when we had a safety car come out. Some drivers pitted after the safety car, that include Tatiana. Some opted to stay out for a very late pit stop. Calderano was always fighting around P18 and P17, ultimately finishing 16th place. Good effort considering the circumstances of missing the two prior rounds the last time she was in a Super Formula race in Motegi, Japan. And considering all the difficulties of 2020, extremely high level championship, this is just a good effort to continue on the season because she will, for now, stay in Japan and finish the rest of the season. Definitely will be following Tatiana, another upcoming driver we're going to talk about, Lena Bueller and her open wheel effort. Yeah, uh, Lena Buller rounded out her season in the Spanish Formula 4 uh, l- last weekend as well. The series was racing in Barcelona for their uh, season finale. Uh, they actually had the three uh, race weekends back to back. They raced it at Aragon, at Jarama, and now in Barcelona. So a very busy final uh, uh, part of the season for the Spanish Formula 4 guys. Uh, Lena, as we as we previously said on on the other episodes, um, she has been a very competitive this se- this season. It was her f- very first season in uh, in Formula cars. She comes from uh, karting, from international karting. She was a big name in the Swiss and then international karting scene. Uh, so it was her first season in in Formula Four. Uh, which is quite a big uh, step forward, uh, but still she managed to do very well in the first season. I always say that uh, she's one of the most interesting uh, upcoming drivers, female drivers uh, out there in in the uh, make, making her first steps in Formula 4 championships. And actually the uh, Spanish Formula 4 has been one of the most uh, interesting series this year. Uh, after the uh, Italian Formula 4 and the German Formula 4, which actually employed the same uh, Tattoos Formula 4 chassis uh, uh, compared to the uh, Spanish Formula 4 championship. Uh, in the previous year, well, actually at, at, at the beginning of the, of the, of the championship, well, uh, when um, it was founded, uh, it was not quite there uh, with other uh, European Formula 4 championships. Uh, while in, in, the cup, in the past couple of years, uh, last year and this year in particular, uh, since it, it's a very cost-effective championship, a lot and has the same cars as the other championships in, in Italy and in Germany, some teams that uh, are racing in those championships are uh, opting to, to do also the Spanish Formula 4 which obviously has, um, has made the, the Spanish Formula 4 Championship uh, really skyrocket as, as an overall quality of, of drivers and teams. So really this year the Spanish Formula 4 had all, uh, over 20 entries, uh, which was very good for, for a season, for a difficult season like this one. Uh, and Lina Buller raced for uh, the um, very competitive Drivex team, um, which also has a partnership with Fernando Alonso in Spain. Uh, and she did very well. Um, she was off, uh, often in the uh, top six and top five in practice. She did very well in practice. While sometimes she couldn't really capitalize on, on her pace and uh, transform that uh, results into a, uh, a good uh, qualifying uh, starting positions or in, in, in race pace. Um, she had a, p- a couple of unfortunate rounds. She had some uh, technical issues. Sometimes she made mistakes. Uh, she had quite a lot of mistakes, uh, in, in, if we have to be honest, in, in the first part of the season. But on, on pure race pace, she was up there in, in the top six, top five. So definitely one to watch. And I was really looking forward to see Lina racing this year. Uh, we met at Le Castellet in, in the second round of, this, of the championship. 
I, I definitely think that she, if she is going to return to the to the championship, will be one, uh, one of the title contenders. And again, in uh, in Barcelona, where she had tested before in the, in. In, in Spain, in the Formula Four car, um, she w- she was very fast in in practice. Again, always up there, top five, top six, seventh. Um, in qualifying, she um, she was eighth. She started eighth in in Q one. Had a pretty okay race one. Uh, she dropped a couple of positions. Uh, um, at, at the beginning, she held eighth and then dropped a couple of positions in the second part of the race. Uh, likely for for tight degradation issues um, and finished tenth. So again, a top ten, uh, one point, still a, a solid result for her. But really, the best result of her of her uh, final uh, race weekend was uh, in, in race two on uh, Sunday morning. Um, she again, she started uh, eighth. It was a reverse grid race. Um, and had a very very competitive race. She moved up a couple of places. Actually, and she also she always uh, seems to struggle a little bit in in the starts. She always had difficult starts and dropped uh, again a couple of posi- positions. But uh, unlike uh, unlike uh, Saturday, uh, she had more pace uh, and she proved that uh, by overtaking uh, some competitors in, in early on. Uh, and finally, finished fifth with a very good move uh, actually in, in the uh, penultimate lap. Uh, so definitely another top five. Uh, we, she equaled her best result of the season, uh, that she had another top five in Aragon two weeks ago. Uh, so f- concluding her season on, on a high again. Um, in race three, she actually was looking for uh, another uh, strong result because uh, on, on the same day uh, from her top five, she was very confident. Uh, again, another uh, difficult start. She um, stalled on the grid. Uh, when the lights went out, she she, she stalled. Uh, and of, of course, all, all, all the pack uh, was really up, up ahead. Uh, she had like uh, 10 seconds. Uh, she was like 10 seconds behind the penultimate driver. Um, but despite the, there was no safety car intervention, so she, that def- definitely made her life a little bit more hard. Uh, but uh, she uh, recovered very well, uh, bunched up again with the pack and uh, started to overtake one driver after the other um, and m- moved up to P12 uh, again, which was uh, very m- midfield, starting from la- last and uh, with all that uh, time to regain. Definitely a very good performance for, for Lena. Uh, actually, she was P11 on the last lap, but on the final uh, couple of corners, she lost out uh, to Alex Garcia. Uh, but again, a P12 uh, after uh, that, such a bad start and uh, with a P5 uh, on, on Sunday to finish uh, the championship on high, uh, we can definitely say that it was a uh, very in- interesting and, and good se- first season for, for Lena in Formula Racing. And we are looking forward to see more uh, of her in, uh, in 2021. 2021 is going to be a very big year for her and many racers. One person looking for 2021, Natalie Decker. 2020 has been a struggle for her, some health complications, missing a couple races here and there. This weekend, she was supposed to be racing. Unfortunately, t- she tested positive for COVID-19. She posted on Twitter the unfortunate news, thanking all her fans for their support. Unfortunately, her year of racing, the 2020 season, has come to an end. She is making the best of it. She is telling all her fans on Twitter that this Saturday on iRacing, you could race with her in competition. So definitely encourage everyone, if you're on iRacing especially, follow Natalie Decker. Great materials. She's definitely a fan favorite and can't miss an opportunity to race against a NASCAR driver. Now, even though the NASCAR series has concluded here in the United States, there's still some more NASCAR racing going on in Europe. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Euronascar made its return to uh, Europe uh, after uh, the previous round, which was uh, actually a couple of months ago in Zolder in Belgium. Uh, they had the schedule on, on, on the calendar, on the initial calendar, around in, um, in Czech Republic at most, uh, which is a very famous racetrack, I would say, in Central Europe. 
Uh, but again, with the uh, COVID re travel res restrictions again in, in Europe, uh, with the second wave, uh, it's been uh, very difficult for Euronascar uh, to try to um, re reorganize their calendar. So they had problems to to, or to held the, uh, the race at uh, most. They had to cancel the race in the Czech Republic. Uh, but the uh, um, Euronascar series organization uh, were very quick uh, to, to set another date uh, for Croatia. So the Euronascar series made its first ever appearance in Croatia at the Grobnit racetrack, which is uh, not very famous, a pretty um, small track, but actually it turned out to be a very, very interesting track, a very fast uh, and twisty in a very scenic location in uh, around the uh, uh, the coastal area at uh, Rijeka uh, with all the mountains behind. It was very, very good track actually. Um, it's, it's very old style, I would say. Not a lot, a lot of runoff areas, um, and there were quite a lot of, of accident actually. Uh, there are two female drivers racing in Euro NASCAR this year. One is the uh, American Julia Landauer, uh, who um, had her 29th birthday uh, during the uh, race weekend at uh, Grobnik. And then Ariana Casoli was an Italian racer, very experienced. Uh, she had a lot of starts in, uh, in Euro NASCAR in, uh, in previous years. Um, and of course, uh, Ariana is one of the, it's a very popular driver in, in Italy, I would say. Um, and, and because she is very friendly with fans, she also always had a very good following in Euro NASCAR. Uh, but she had a very difficult race weekend in, in Croatia. Uh, she crashed in, uh, in, in qualifying, a very heavy crash. Uh, on the final part of the circuit, which which is very fast and technical, and there is no runoff area at all. There are uh, like uh, uh, guardrails on the side of the of the track. Uh, she crashed very heavily after a misunderstanding with another driver um, and absolutely destroyed her uh, number fifty four car. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, for, luckily, she was uh, she was unarmed, um, unscratched, walked away from uh, from uh, the crash. But her uh, car was absolutely uh, unrepairable, um, so she had to sit out the first uh, race of the weekend uh, in uh, Grobnik. While Julia Landauer uh, qualified seventh, uh, she actually had the. She said that she had something more uh, in it, but of course the red flag for Ariana's crash. Uh, stop the action um, and the the session could not be restarted because the track uh, the track wall was so damaged that they had uh, to stop the all the sessions for over two hours to repair the barriers um, so the, Julia qualified seventh started seventh at a pretty lonely race in seventh position and finished there uh, but again, some solid points. Uh, both of the uh, female drivers, both Julia and Ariana, uh, were coming from a, a top five finish at Zolder. Uh, so, yeah, a very um, it was the uh, the best finish result for uh, for Ariana in her NASCAR career. Uh, while Julia, she said that she was expecting a little bit more from her transition to European uh, stock car racing, coming from her very strong results in. Uh, in America, uh, we would like to remember that she was also uh, selected for the NASCAR diversity program. So um, definitely there were high hopes to see Julia com coming to Euro NASCAR. Uh, but again, it, it was her third top 10 result of the, of the season. Uh, more points. She currently sits sixth in the overall uh, point standings. So definitely uh, I would say that she her pace is coming. She is a little bit more uh, comfortable with the series, with the tracks. Of, of course, uh, all new tracks for her. I never raced in Europe before. So definitely, I would say that if she can remain in Europe next se season, will be a very interesting for Julia. Uh, in race two on, on Sunday, uh, Ariana Casoli made a surprise return to the to the series because uh, her teammate also crashed uh, quite heavily, uh, Max Lanza, and fractured his wrist. Uh, so his car was uh, was sitting there, and uh, the team uh, decided to, to give the number eighty eight car to Ariana. 
Uh, Ariana, of course, uh, started last and, and finished last uh, after this unfortunate weekend in uh, in Grobnik, but at least she she could make it to for race two. And uh, Julia again starting from P7, she had quite a good race. Um, in the opening race uh, laps, uh, she had a mistake, she went into the grass and uh, dropped a couple of positions. But in the second half of the race, uh, she was really strong and could overtake a couple of cars, uh, made it back to P6. Uh, and on the final, uh, in the final stages, when uh, another driver received a penalty, uh, she could move up to P5, which was her first uh, top five of the championship and uh, really coming coming strong into the final round of the season because uh, as i previously said Euro NASCAR really struggled to uh, to put put on the the calendar this year and they uh, decided to uh, to do the all the four uh, remaining rounds at valencia in two weeks time uh, so they will have like formula e did in uh, in berlin uh, they will hold four, four races uh, one after the other one day after the other so definitely it's like uh, um, half a season still uh, remaining and of course it's like playoff for nascar so double points uh, so everything still to play for uh, the championship uh, still very much open with julia being on uh, in, in p6 in the standings and ariana being p11 uh, actually, it's still, still very interesting to see the, the races. Uh, Ariana actually wrote on Instagram uh, yesterday uh, that she doesn't know if she will be in Valencia because, of course, uh, after you walk away from a crash like that and the first thing you, you think is, uh, okay, I made it, uh, it, it alive, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I'm still in one piece. Uh, the second thought that crosses your mind is that, okay, this is going to be very expensive. And uh, Ariana is, doesn't have a lot of, of, of financial backing, uh, so it's going to be hard for her to, to come back for the final four races uh, because of all the damages that her car sustained. Hopefully she can, uh, she can find some support and, and be back in Spain, uh, because definitely she's one of the fan favorites and she deserves to be on the championship. It was very good to see both racers able to compete. I know, especially after that big crash, come back in a teammate's car, always really rewarding feeling to get the job done at the racetrack. Of course, a lot of these women racers, a lot of times, they're pioneering, especially in the NASCAR Euro Series, NASCAR in the United States, all over the world. When there's a woman racer, they're doing something new. But we'll talk a little bit about a special story that was brought to light and thanks to Google. Yeah, on November 16th, uh, we, we were very glad to find out that uh, Eliska Junkova uh, was featuring on the Google main page uh, as a doodle. Uh, so uh, Google uh, decided to celebrate her 120th uh, birthday. Uh, definitely interesting to see a female driver, especially from the from such a early age of, of motor racing, uh, featuring on, uh, on on the Google main page on uh, on selected countries. I think she was uh, um, in in Italy, Germany, Canada, and a couple of more other countries. Um, Eliska Junkova, of course, uh, was one of the pioneer uh, racing drivers from uh, the uh, 20s. Uh, she, um, she was pretty famous uh, in, in Europe, uh, battled with all the big names from uh, motorsport of, the, of those days, uh, like Nuvolari, all those uh, um, really pioneer uh, racing drivers. Um, she, it was, it, it's very interesting to, to learn more about her story. Uh, because uh, she started out as, as a mechanic, uh, so that's definitely uh, not common for, for a woman racer in, uh, in those years. Um, then she married a racing driver, uh, and she was acting as a mechanic and co-driver. So when the, the, uh, in, in those years, uh, the, her, the mechanic was uh, often uh, on board with the driver, when they banned that, um, she started to race herself and to drive. Uh, and she became quite, uh, quite famous as a as race driver, as I said, um, especially in, in Czech Republic, what is now Czech Republic, but also all around Europe and, and Germany, uh, because she raced uh, in, in many races in Germany. And in 1927, she, was, she became the first woman to ever win a Grand Prix race. And she did so at the Nürburgring, which was at, at that 
stage the the you know the, the most difficult and dangerous racetrack in the world likely um she she won that race and she she made history uh in 1927 uh but then again she she was doing pretty strong results uh, all around europe in the 20s uh, she became a friend with uh, the Bugatti founder, uh, of course, founder of, of, of what is now uh, one of the most uh, famous uh, supercar brands in the world. And we can actually say that she became uh, what we would call now a brand ambassador for, uh, for that uh, company. Uh, she was racing with uh, a Bugatti and um, she was very linked to that brand. Um, and uh, after uh, after 1928, 28, she retired after uh, an, an accident which involved uh, her uh, husband, who died at the Nürburgring after a, a race that they did together. Uh, she retired for, from competitive uh, racing, uh, but still had uh, a quite good uh, relationship with Bugatti, um, entered a couple of uh, corporate events, uh, the Bugatti founder uh, gifted her of a streetcar, of a Bugatti streetcar, and she uh, was traveling all, all around the world because she was uh, very passionate about the traveling. Uh, and then I helped the um, secret authorities to design uh, the what is now the Brno racetrack, which is probably the most famous racetrack in her home country. Uh, she's famous also because she is um, believed to be one of the first drivers to uh, adopt the uh, track walk technique to memorize the uh, corners, the sequence of corners, which is something that uh, pretty much every professional race driver do now uh, nowadays. Uh, but still, such a attention to detail in, in the early age of, of motor racing uh, is really interesting to, to note. Um, and it's also interesting to see that uh, a uh, female driver is uh, remembered as one of the um, motorsport legend from for, from her country because uh, nowadays in the Czech Republic there is an award named after her uh, and uh, last year uh, the uh, W Series qualifier um, uh, Gilkova, uh, Gabriela Gilkova, uh, who is also known uh, with the nickname of Quick Gabi uh, who is also a pretty famous uh, sim racer. She also entered the uh, W Series official uh, sim racing championship, uh, winning also one race. Um, she won the, the three times the uh, Yulkova, Yunkova award uh, for uh, the um, um, for, 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 for for being uh, the most important uh, female driver in her home.